Dice and Pizza contains descriptions of peril, natural disasters, and kaiju. Content warnings can be found in the episode description. Hello, hello, wayward listeners. Uh, welcome to Dice and Pizza, a quest show that follows a band of strangers who may or may not be getting along at the current moment. Uh, my name is Derek, he am pronouns, and I will be your guide for today's journey. For those who are unfamiliar with the game Quest, or tabletop role-playing games in general, Quest is a game system that uses one 20-sided die. A one is a catastrophe, and a 20 is a triumph, with a gradient of successes and failures in between. Instead of skills, you have abilities that you spend adventure points, or AP, to activate. The game focuses on character and world building. That's about all you need to know about the mechanics. What's really important is the story, and of course, the players. Hey, yeah, I'm Maya Whirl. They, them pronouns, please. I play Zaba, the party's naturalist. He's the masked guardian of Kokuru, chosen by the god Bannon at birth. This responsibility makes him serious, but behind the mask, you sense a curious individual. Hey, yo, my name is Justin. He, him pronouns. I'll be playing Driftwood, they, them pronouns. Driftwood is the party doctor. People notice their seafoam skin, tattoos, and luxurious dark blue pompadour. Driftwood is an offbeat nomad from the island village of Noro, looking to travel and learn and eat too much food. Hi, uh, my name is Kyla. My pronouns are they, them, theirs. Um, I play Arneas, Ernie for short, a skilled spy having some difficulties in their career path of choice. They go by they, them pronouns and sport a pair of red lens goggles and a long flowing cape that drapes over one shoulder. And with that, let's grab a slice and let's dive into today's adventure. For thousands of years, the people of Myrios have not been united. They've been living scattered in different villages, cities, and tribes. To the west, the isolated village uh, of Noro, and to the east, the militant city of Tosu at the base of Mount Ida. Our story begins in the southern plains along the river Tigaris in a small rice farming village called Kokuru. Recently, their guardian and protector, Zaba, has gone missing. And today, there are two strangers who have entered town seeking work. Ernie and Driftwood, the two of you have come by way of east and west roads into the center of this very small one-street town. You notice that... Uh, at the center of town, there is an elderly man with long, flowing white hair who's wearing like an earth-colored robe who's standing atop a tree stump at the center of town. There are lots of angry and confused villagers surrounding him as he tries to speak up. And he says, Villagers, Zaba, Zaba is gone, but we must, we must gather and find our guardian. And another villager shouts, Why? He's supposed to protect us, not run off. But please, please, everyone, I plead with you. Please, we must find Zaba. Another guy shouts from the village, We're no warriors. We're but simple farmers. We cannot face off with the beasts outside of the village. And thus, this narrative, you know, you kind of hear a lot of these things being said as Goro's trying to, like, you know, calm the village down. Um, the two of you end up sort of on the outskirts uh, of this sort of gathering of, of, uh, of people, uh, standing next to each other. Uh, Driftwood hears the commotion and and, and kind of gets excited um, because uh, any opportunity for an ouster of the uh, of the guardian system, um, Driftwood wants to know about uh, and starts. Uh, Driftwood walks up to each villager and is cavorting. Is like, guardians aren't so great, huh? Um, this isn't uh, this. The things aren't going right, huh? Um, you know, maybe we can think of a new system for this. Um, this, this, this is not working, right? Obviously, um, guardians are bad. We should, we should be trying to, you know, do things ourselves. You're not just a simple farm worker. You're not just a single, simple um, uh, carpenter. Like we can, we can. Uh, and then Driftwood realizes they're all just kind of not listening to this stranger <laughs> yeah. who just came into town. They're all kind town. of looking at you. They're all looking at you really weird. One of them says like, "Oh, like, like, what are you like? I don't, I don't. We love, we we like Zaba. We don't, well, we don't hate Zaba. We just, we just don't feel qualified to go out <laughs> to go out and find Zaba. You mm. know, like we like Zaba. Zaba's really cool. Well, what do you know? Um, <laughs> Oh, I, I'm gonna. I walk up to uh, to Goro, who's still trying, who's like in the middle of all of this, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, please, please help me. Mm, uh, do you have any food? <laughs> yes, are, are we have food. Okay, I, 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 not, if, does Ernie hear this? Do you think? Yes, yeah. I think Ernie's not, okay, because 
I was gonna say Ernie's stomach audibly grumbles <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Um, and I think they hear, okay, they hear, they hear food and they perk up at that, but they're at the edge of the, they're at the edge of the crowd. So I think they're going to wait before approaching. So they're going to, they're going to watch and see. Cool. Yeah. Goro says, if it's food you're looking for, we can provide food and, and payment and other kind of payment. If you just help me find other, Zaba, other you kind, must not be from around here. <laughs> uh, Goro <laughs> looks at you, Ernie. <gasps> A warrior, a warrior wearing the colors of Tosu. Oh goodness, we've been, we have someone who, who can who can help us. Please, the both of you, come down with me to the river, and I'll and I will tell you more. I can pay you in food and um, and money. Mm, Very yeah, little okay. money, but we have some money. Mm, okay, all right. I I kind of glance over at at Ernie, uh, and I was like, oh, uh, what's your name? Um, <laughs> my name is um. Ernie, or Ernie, am and yours? Uh, Driftwood. Um, this place, this place doesn't have a guardian. Uh, this is ridiculous. Do you agree? <laughs> Wait, this place doesn't have a guardian. I mean, their guardian isn't present. So currently, literally, <laughs> this place doesn't have a guardian. <laughs> Goro leads the two of you down to the river, where there is only one canoe. Ernie's stomach is still grumbling as you walk down. Okay. As you walk down, Goro just eyes your grumbling stomach and says, here, take this bun. It'll tide you over. It was supposed to be my lunch, but if you're going to find Zaba, you're going to need all the strength you can muster. And you too, Driftwood. And he heads, and he well, procures no, a second bun. Elders must eat first. I, I, I like, I cut off, I take out like three fourths and I hand it, I hand it back. Driftwood eats oh. the whole thing in one gulp. <laughs> You are very <laughs> humble, Ernie. I appreciate this, but please, no. I, I must insist. I insist. I no. Okay. Oh, 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 okay. And then <laughs> Goro just starts to eat the bun as he explains. Um, Zaba took our other village canoe and was last seen rowing upstream the other day. And I fear the worst has befallen him. Hmm. Tough. I mean, uh, let's, <laughs> like, we can solve this. Uh... <laughs> That's Row fine. Up the river Tigaris. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and be I, careful of what. Li- yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I have I have um, boating experience, so um, should be just should be easy easy as pie. Um, uh, also, did we not? Do I know? Hi, I'm Driftwood. Also, do I have? Do I know your name? <laughs> oh, my name is Goro. I'm the village elder. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, just remember the name Driftwood. Uh, you, you. This will be. Uh, this will be a snap, so we'll we'll be back. Don't worry. <laughs> All right, but be careful. Be careful with what lies ahead. I have not been that far from this village in a long time, but there is something inauspicious this day, and I and I do not like this ill omen. So be be wary. And with that, he hands you the paddle to the canoe, and walks away. Are you good to go, Ernie? Ernie's kind of waiting to see what Driftwood does because Ernie doesn't know how to get into the canoe. Oh, so we just stare back and forth. Uh, okay, so Driftwood looks at Ernie as if to get into the canoe. Um, and I guess we're just staring at each other. Yeah, Ernie's just like, go on. Uh-huh, You're like, you go first. On. <laughs> no, go sit go sit in the canoe You're- and then I I'll, I'll push us into the the river and then we'll I'll I'll paddle upstream. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. I think Ernie like puts one foot in the canoe. Looks back, <laughs> looks back at Driftwood. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, here. Put your foot in the canoe. <laughs> you can do this. It's just the most tediously slow pro- process. It's like I we don't we don't have rivers in Tosu. <laughs> do you need help? Are you are you good? Are you no, in I'm there? I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. I'm fine. All right. I can do this. I can do this. So Driftwood starts uh, all the strength in the world. Uh, uh, um, <laughs> Wait, pushing. Are you going to get on the? Are you yeah. going to get on the canoe? Uh, in the middle. <laughs> Don't worry. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, it's like half the how half the boats uh, going in there. The whole thing starts going in there, and then. I, I, I take a couple steps back and then Driftwood just jumps into the, the canoe. 
Driftwood, as you jump into the canoe, the canoe rocks back and forth and water takes in and it splashes and Ernie, you are soaked as the two of you begin to row <laughs> upstream. As you row, you notice that the grass and wildlife begins to wane the farther, farther north you go up the river. It gets eerily quiet and the water the water there appears to be, the river begins appears to be lowering and lowering as you row all the way up to a sort of fork in the river where the rivers Acheron and Tigaris meet. And in the middle of the two is an ancient pyramid-like temple. Where an ancient door would have been is instead a hole in a wall leading inside. We got to go through there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's the only thing, it's the only okay. thing here. The two of you beach the canoe and make your way onto shore. Ernie gets out first this time. <laughs> There's no hesitation. As you peer inside the temple, you smell something acrid. The sound of a squelch and ooze as you see a blood-red, gelatinous creature filled with bones, rusty armor, and remains of previous adventurers. As you gaze at its imposing stature, you see that it is holding a masked warrior that it is about to consume. And it's at this moment that Zaba, you come to, dangling upside down, full Luke Skywalker <laughs> from Empire Strikes Back. You're in the air. You're like dangling. You like have, you can see your spear in the creature and you might be able to uh, reach it. Yeah, can I reach my spear? You said it, I might be able to reach my spear. Yeah, go ahead and roll me a 20-sided die. Oh boy, first roll. A nine. That is a tough choice. You managed to grab your spear, but you do have to choose between two things. A, it's about to attack you and you'll take damage. Or B, you can stab it with your spear at risk of losing it again. I will attack. You, pl you plunge your spear into it and you prevent it from, di from attacking you. You deal two points of damage. Ugh, it smells awful in here. <laughs> <laughs> We have to help this helpless civilian. <laughs> Excuse me? I am no helpless citizen. I am Zaba, guardian of Kokoro Village. Ernie's just, just retching at the smell. I don't think they can focus. But okay, okay, but I think they're going to follow. I'm going to follow your lead, uh, Driftwood. Okay. Are you hurt? I'm doing just fine. If you can help me battle this creature, that would be nice. <laughs> totally in harm's way. <laughs> The first, okay. the first principle I learned in school is, is to always always make sure the bystanders are okay before it into danger. Absolutely. Save the bystander. We Thanks have to save me. them. Okay. Driftwood leaps into action with a, with a knife into a lunge, um, both hands up towards the jelly. So the gel like looks like a tidal wave uh, holding Zaba by one leg and Zaba's upside down having stabbed it and it's sort of like arced. You can like jump onto like what looks to be like its back and stab it. Ooh, okay, um, yeah. I'm going to yeah. jump on the back okay. and stab it with my, my knife comb. As you get on the jelly's back to stab it, roll me a <laughs> d20. <laughs> 18. Eighteen. That is a success. You succeed without any compromises, and you deal the damage you intended to deal. So that is one damage with your dagger as you plunge it into the back of the jelly. At this moment, it roars and it lets go of Zaba's. Ernie, okay. what do you do? Yeah, I think the creature looks distracted. Oh wait, can I use? <gasps> wait, I think I can use one of my abilities. I'm gonna do sneak attack as um, Driftwood attacks once per round when a nearby foe attacks a creature other than you. You may exploit their focus. You may immediately move behind them to perform one of the following actions. You make a basic attack on them, or you incapacitate a commoner, which this is not. I'm going to make a basic attack is what I'm going to do with sneak attack. You sneak into the shadows and get behind the jelly and plunge your sword into it, dealing two points of damage. Zaba, you're back. It's your turn. Um... The jelly is sort of distracted as it kind of withers around trying to turn to find like mm -hmm. driftwood as it realizes it's not alone anymore. I scan, I, I guess I'm, I'm now I'm scanning because I'm out of, I'm out of danger. I see these two, these two rude figures. I'm going to, hmm, ba -ba -ba -bum -bum. I want to use the zero level freeze 
um, which says you blow cool air, creating freezing winds that swirl around a nearby creature or object. Affected creatures feel a deep chill in their bones and are hit for one HP. Both of you are not affected, but you do feel like this cold, biting wind swirl past you and then um, go around um, the jelly creature. As the creature, like, this is what you could imagine it shivering. Um as it sort of ripples throughout it. You notice, Saba, that, that the creature begins to kind of like slump as it's struggling to retain its form. Seeing that you did that, it, it slings out some of, some of its gelatin at you. It strikes you for three points of damage, Zaba, okay. as um, parts of the jelly kind of burn away at, at, at parts of your clothing and, and skin. Okay, so my uh, am I still on the the back? Uh, where am I positionally? Um, you've kind of like so you kind of like slipped down it because it's it's jelly. It's, got it's, it. Uh, yeah. so you're like back on the ground next to Ernie. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. On the ground. Um. I I still have my knife comb. Correct. It didn't get stuck. Correct. It did yes. not get stuck. Thank you. Um. So uh, I see I see the gel the jelly attacks. Um this uh this person i scream at the jelly how dare you um so mm, thinking brain did you say there were skeletons in the gel yes okay like intact skeletons kind of uh like more like bones more like okay not 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 like a fully intact skeleton just like bones are there skulls Yeah, there's like a skull. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I am going to use uh, reanimate. Um, and so reanimate uh, is one AP. It says you, you animate a nearby corpse or skeleton, making it your thrall. It can move around, but it cannot leave your scene. The spell ends when you leave the scene. You, you control the creature telepathically. It is not conscious and it only follows your commands. The creature has three HP and can attack for one HP. Okay. Um, so I cast reanimate on, on a skull that I see inside the gel. Um, and I say, chew. What <laughs> magic is this? As you reanimate the skull, you just hear it go. Ah! Ah! <laughs> and then it goes and it, it like go, tries to bite as you command it. But then the jelly kind of just like looks, it flips, it spins. It's it, what it would be a head towards you and crushes the jelly as it, the, the, the skull as it, and it crushes the skull as it does so, uh, and and uh, destroys your 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 reanimated friend. You did your best, buddy. What the fuck? <laughs> it is Ernie's turn. <laughs> I I just I'm 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 think I'm gonna I'm just gonna stab the I'm gonna give a a, a look at at Jojo, but I'm gonna stab the jelly again. <laughs> cool. Roll to hit. Um, 10. 10. Okay. That is a tough choice. You succeed in your action, but there's a cost. So you go and you swing your sword into the jelly, but you do what happens is you slay the jelly. As your blade pierces it, the jelly begins to kind of wither away, but you didn't account for that. So your arm is still swinging. You can choose between hitting a friend. Or your sword smacking into the ground and breaking. Oh, man. Oh, God. Okay. No, can't do any harm to bystanders. I'm, I'm letting the sword break. Cool. <laughs> you bring your sword down and you slash into the jelly. And as, it, as you cut through it like water, you smack your blade into the ground. And the blade tip snaps off and the sword breaks. I'm going to take you a moment with the broken pieces of their sword driftwood starts to slow clap wait were you supposed to break the sword was that part of it good job though thanks i guess what theatrics are you two playing at are you okay citizen as i just said i am zaba guardian of kokuru village Uh, a frown develops on driftwood's face Hmm. A guardian, huh? Oh, uh, you probably think you're all that, huh? <laughs> oh, I see. You're not going to introduce yourself. This is this is the introduction you give me. Um, I'm well, Ernie. Pleased to meet you, <laughs> uh, Ernest. <laughs> <laughs> Ernest, for a moment, you know, I, I, I'm Ernie. 
Welcome, um, Ernie. Ernie, Ernie. Ernie, you don't have to give your name. <laughs> I have given my name. You will not return return me in that in favor. Um, fine, fine. Uh, my name's Driftwood. Uh, I'm from Noro. Uh, we save the day. Uh, let's go home. Welcome, Driftwood of Noro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. How did you get here? Why, why are you two here? Goro, your village elder, sent us over here to save you. How? What day is it? T- is Tuesday. Is it Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday? Is it, uh, it's I like, don't know. Don't have to ask me. Okay. <laughs> I, I think it's Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> Zaba, you went in on a Sunday. Hmm. I see. It's, it seems I've, I've been out for several days. I see why, I see why you are here. Yeah, Goro's, Goro seemed very panicked um, when we were at the village. Have you been here the whole time? I... Uh, I went to investigate this um, structure on Sunday, and it it seems that something I was attacked or something happened, and I blacked out. And now it is Tuesday. You can see why Goro was panicked. Yes. Well, I hope Goro gave you a proper welcome to Kokoro Village. Yeah, kind of just put us on a boat, and then we got here so um he did give us food and promised us money so you can can you confirm did he promise you money i thought he promised me money well i'm assuming that we're splitting both but you know what i'd rather take the food so if you want to give me all your food (laughs) okay no no we can split (laughs) okay all right sounds good um can you confirm on goro's trustworthiness zaba if anyone should be suspicious, it should be of you two. <gasps> mm-hmm. <laughs> but yes, I will vouch for my village elder's trustworthiness. I go to Ernie. I don't like this guy. <laughs> I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't think you like any guardian. I think that's kind of... Correct. <laughs> What are you two whispering about? What are you two oh, whispering about? Just, uh, just I don't like group. you. <laughs> I see. Well, the feeling is mutual. You don't like me. <laughs> Why would I like you? Why would, what, what reason have you given for me to have... Uh, <laughs> exhibit gel, uh, which well, is, is dead. Awkward. Ernie, what do, you, what do you think? Who's right? <laughs> And it's coming from at the very back of this temple pyramid. You see there's a sort of hallway descending down. Zaba, you remember that this is the hallway you had followed before you blacked out. What was that? What I was see. That? There's a, it is a passageway. I, my memories are not as sound um, as I would like them to be. But I, I remember before um, I blacked out that... I went down that passageway. Sounds like a pretty safe passageway to me. Sounds <laughs> not to me. <laughs> yes, that was sarcasm. Good oh, if, nice one. <laughs> well, I came to investigate this structure because I wanted to make sure that um, my village was safe, that whatever was in the structure would not um, come out and attack us. I don't feel safe leaving without making sure that there is nothing here. Um, that would threat would threaten my village. Would um, we've we've gotten rid of this um, this gel- gelatinous thing? Kind of kick. I kick some of the like the bones and the um, the armor, and for that I thank you um, for helping me with this. If you would if you would like to return to the village, I'm sure you would be handsomely rewarded with what little we have. If you would like to assist me with um, investigating this further, we would be very thankful. I'm down for going down there. As the, the faster we can get to the village, the better. Um, Zaba, we have growing pains to deal with. Um, but you look hurt. I will mend you. Would, would you like to be mended before we go down there? You took a nasty slash from the from that jelly. jelly. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. If it would not be too much trouble... I think Ernie's um, going to sneak closer to the hallway 
while they're talking. So mend is one AP. Um, you gently touch a creature immediately, restoring five HP and mending minor wounds like cuts and bruises. The spell does not remove impairments, heal permanent wounds, or cure disease. You cannot use the spell during combat. Cool. So Zaba, you feel your, your wounds magically seal up and uh, you feel much better as you return to full hit points. Ernie, at the at the edge of this pathway, you see that it descends down into a cave underneath the temple and that there is appears to be some kind of running water down here and a bright light that is fluctuating. I'll get closer to the pulsating light. Ernie, you're the first to enter the room. As you walk down into the room, you see that there is a sort of like like sort of sandy kind of like ground to stand on and that there is sort of like a what appears to be like like part of a river that runs through this cave and you see a sort of ball of light at the center kind of on the border of like the sandy beach and where the water touches just floating in the air and it's pulsing and you notice that there's water floating up like reverse into the orb and disappearing surrounding the room you see that there is an altar around the whole wall you see carvings and paintings that depict the four gods Uli, Bannon, Thala, and Mitra. And at the end, which is right around the time when Zaba and Driftwood enter, uh, you see this giant depiction of a ser- like this giant painting of like a golden serpentine looking creature that you've never seen before. You weren't taught. Do either, do either of you recognize this painting? Hmm. Does Driftwood recognize uh, anything distinct about the painting, or do I have the same knowledge as uh, as Ernie currently? You feel like your grandparents may have mentioned something mm-hmm. about like an ancient creature that was like a serpent-like, but mm. you don't really remember. Sure. Uh, like, there's a lot of serpents. There's a lot of serpents in in mythos. Like, right. this could be any serpent. So I I kind of casually walk over to the the serpent, um, and I kind of look at it for a good amount of time, and I'm like, could it, could it be? No, nah, I don't know what this is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think Ernie kind of shrugs her shoulders and continues walking around the peri- the perimeter of the room. Zaba, you remember that this was the room where you touched the orb and blacked out afterwards. I see. Uh, Do not touch the orb. Um, Ernie has both of their hands on the wall. And they're like, (gasps) like, um, I, I, um, it comes back to me. It comes, comes back to me now that I'm in this room once again. I, the last thing I remember actually is touching that orb, attempting to, to move it, um, and that was when um, I um, fell unconscious for for some reason. Hmm. This place looks old, first of all. Um, well, it must be pretty serious if you were unconscious for two days. Did you just come to when we came to save you? Yes, I, I woke up at that point, uh, right before you came in. Have you eaten? <laughs> Have I eaten? Did I eat while I was unconscious? <laughs> Um, I'm assuming it was a rhetorical question. <laughs> it's even a rhetorical question. <laughs> um, I start rooting around in my bag for like, I, I pull like an old heart tack that's kind of crumbling. Like, would you like something to eat? Or I mean, are you hungry? Um, sure. <laughs> um... <laughs> Oh, no, no. Driftwood okay. just takes <laughs> it. Driftwood, you just ate. No, I don't like Driftwood take it. I like Driftwood, you just it, ate. It you crumbles between both of your fingers. <laughs> Driftwood. Yeah. Here, I, 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 I take out some water. I take out a skin, skin of water and just... Okay. Um, does some of the water start to leave towards the orb? Yeah, actually. The water begins <laughs> oh, to like shit. float up and into the orb and it disappears. <laughs> <laughs> what, the, what? I think Ernie, yeah, Ernie just looks at the. I, I tried. Driftwood's I stomach see. grumbles and sees the water float towards the orb. Feels a flash of panic. We should. I don't think we should be here. Also, I'm hungry. <laughs> 
Um, I have a few rations, but I'm I'm just gonna very quietly, like un- like unobtrusively, take a little bit and kind of. I'm wearing a and full snack. a full face mask, so right. I'm, I'm my hand is going under oh the God. face mask. <laughs> I think Ernie, Ernie just food. watches this very curiously. Just the mask the mask kind of like. <laughs> like like flaps a bit as you're like that's not eating because you can like yeah. my mouth is chewing so it's like very slightly moving um, is there like crumbs coming out of the, <laughs> there's like crumbs just coming out of the bottom of the mask just oh like, god so the three of you are standing in this room having had just had your snack fiasco and you notice that the water is moving up into this glowing orb that is beginning to pulsate and you are right driftwood this room does feel very ominous in a way that uh, all three of you haven't really felt ever in your life before. Something is quite wrong with this room. Uh, Zava, I like regain myself. Uh, what compelled you to move the orb when you were here? What compelled me? I, myself, um, because I, I thought that perhaps moving this orb might affect it or stop the water from moving into it. <sighs> uh, Driftwood takes a huge sigh, uh, gets a little emotional, um, gets more real. I, I don't like what this, what this foretells. Um, the consequences of an orb like this, this artifact taking water, um, fills me with dread. Um, what was your original plan? Oh, mentally, I didn't did not have much of a plan beyond investigating this orb. My my village is is a rice growing village, and we're just about ready to flood flood the fields. Water is of importance um, to us, and the yeah the river levels are beginning to um, go down for some reason. For decades. I have observed that the waters around Noro have been getting more and more shallow. And for the first time, I seem to have witnessed something that provides somewhat of an answer. I have no idea what kind of magic is happening that is taking this water, but I can only connect it to the consequences that have happened. Our, our whole village's life cycle is connected our spiritualism is connected to all of the water. And I fear that this is a sign of corruption. I I don't know if we should move this, but I am in agreement that we need to intervene in what is happening right now um, or get some sort of answer. Uh, there must be a reason why we were all brought here in the first place. I see Yes. I do believe that it seems that this may have some connection to perhaps what may be happening in your village. I this is beyond my um my capabilities to address. I'm not um perhaps collectively we can come to a conclusion. Um are there any rocks? In the room, like okay, I'm gonna pick one up and throw it at the orb. Okay, <laughs> how, how big of a rock are you grabbing? <laughs> Sorry, um, like a pebble. Yeah, with ease, you throw the pebble at the ball of light, and you hear a ting as it clanks off of a glass-like sound, like a glass-like orb, like at the center of it. Like the pulsating shudders a little bit when you do that. I'm picking up another pebble. I'm with. <laughs> I'm gonna throw another pebble. I just one more. Just one more time. Ting and you notice the light does like shimmer when that happens in the room, like it, it dims a little bit. Does anything happen to the pebbles that are on the ground, or they just seem like pebbles? Um, they look a little bit smoldered, smoldered, <laughs> or like smoky, you know, like they're not like burnt in half, but they are like there's a little bit of smoke coming hmm. off of them. Interesting, like this orb is very Maybe. hot. Um, oh, no. Hmm. Um, can I again use freeze, which uh, blows uh, freezing winds that swirl around a nearby creature or object? Can I do that around the orb? Yeah, so you begin to blow freezing air around it. 
Um, the light is still pulsing. It's it's kind of dimming a little bit as the temperature cools. So I have death sense. Um, it's you naturally sense whether any remnants of the dead spirit creatures are nearby, but not their positions. Um, is is there any um, you know spirits or presence of the dead around? There is a presence of a spirit. Okay, so I'm gonna cast commune with the dead. Mm -hmm. um, so commune with the dead is one AP. If you are aware of one or more spectral creatures nearby, like ghosts, you may communicate with them. You do not need to be able to see a spirit as long as you have sense its presence. Um, like with death sense, you may have a conversation with the spirits for up to a minute and you communicate with them telepathically. Uh, you must share a language to understand each other. Spirits must want to respond. If they choose not to speak to you, your adventure point is refunded. Yeah. Describe to me physically what Driftwood does. So Driftwood closes their eyes, um, gets down on their knees, uh, puts their hands out on their thighs, um, bends, bows their head slightly towards the, the orb. Um, and starts to speak um, in their Bayali dialect, just key phrases. In the Bayali dialect, the spirit responds and says, Hmm, interesting. A mortal being. What brings you here? We three here come with peace. We don't mean any harm to this place. We want to know what is going on with the water. Why? What is this artifact that is here? Is this meant to be here? Um, is there anything that we can do to ease any pain you may have if you have it? Ease my pain, you can. The orb is both a prison and a tool. It is a weapon and a cage. It once belonged to a man named Tang Kai. And I'm trapped inside of it. His prisoner. And then I, Driftwood, I don't know if we all hear it, but Driftwood, you know, re recites it back to everyone as if they, they had heard it. Kai. Tim Kai. Is that, is that name familiar to any of you? It isn't familiar to me. I don't no, think it would be familiar to Zaba unless this was a... It is familiar to none of you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this, so what we know is that, um, that there is a spirit trapped in here. So should we break it out? Is that possible? There is, we can just, we can find out. <laughs> do we, do we know, did the spirits introduce themselves? They did. Well, that's all I know so far. And honestly, um, you know, my, my spiritual powers, you know, we can keep using them until we get more answers. But I think that now is the time to act. It seems that um, this object seems to be, to be quite hot. Um, looking at these pebbles, it, the, um, my wind seemed to affect it. I could freeze the objects and then perhaps that might um make it easier to um to hit and damage i like take out i take out my sword at the ready okay so i'm gonna cast freeze but at level um costing two ap points um which it says you freeze a nearby commoner minion or object encasing it in ice until you leave the scene so okay. I mean, I, i'm hoping to both yeah. like weaken it so that um and to help with destroying this all righty um i guess i looked at driftwood mm -hmm. and say like did you want to also um did you want to attack at the same time um i'm i'm fine with you know uh honestly i don't want to attack it um i okay. only have my my shark tooth comb knife and ideally um i don't want to get that close if anything Here, happens here's my spear oh uh <laughs> Let's do it. I, I, <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow, perfect. So both of you are going to attack? Yeah. Yep. So, Zaba, you begin to twirl your arms, summoning cold air from up above and down into this chamber. And as you begin to swirl the air around the orb, the orb freezes. Light refracts off of it um, as, the, as it begins to dim, as it can only see, you know, seep through little parts of the ice. And it's at that moment that Driftwood and Ernie like slam their weapons into the orb, shattering and smashing the orb. And it's at that moment that everything goes dark. 
Don't know what we expected there. And all of a sudden, from somewhere, someplace, a large, bright, golden, blinding light blinds you all as you all kind of fall backwards and look as from this from where the cracked orb lays a giant serpentine like creature this bigger than anything you've ever seen as big as something up in the sky as big as the clouds as long as the river flies up and blasts through the ceiling of the temple destroying it and as it flies up, it's long, long, long. This body must be at least a mile long as it flies out of the orb. It's golden scales reflecting light everywhere. And it spins around as it comes down. It's giant serpent, almost <laughs> lion-like head, which you all come to realize you have come face to face with a dragon a mythological dragon on none of the likes that you ever thought could have ever have existed. And the creature looks at you, Driftwood, and all of a sudden the three of you all hear this at the same time. Foolish mortals, you freed me from my prison, and for that I will spare your lives for now. But be gone, the world belongs to Tang Kai now. And the dragon takes off with a thunderous flight up into the sky, the light reflecting off his scales, and he disappears. I can't see. Can I use animal, animal form to transform into um, a hawk and just fly up and, and like, yeah... You transform into a hawk and take off into the sky. You fly up and up and up and up. Um, you feel a hot breeze up at this level that you're flying as the dragon flies at quite a fast speed. From up here, you see the world as it stands. It is quite large, quite big, and quite shocking and terrifying as this mile-long dragon flies. This, the full scale of the dragon can be, kind of be seen at this vantage point where we, when we were like up close, it was like so big that you couldn't like really get a, a sense of it. But now I can see how, how, the, how the dragon spans across the land. I don't have a good feeling about this. Dyson Pizza is Maya Worrell as Zaba, Justin Rickefort as Driftwood, Kyla Worrell as Ernie, and Derek Aiello, myself, as the guide. Cover art is by Gene Young. Music is by Itamar Benzimra. Original sound effects are by Brian Kim. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Dyson Pizza for updates on the show. And be sure to check out the video or the audio version of this show on YouTube or any podcasting platform you might be listening to. Thank you so much for tuning in to this very first episode of Dyson Pizza. I am so happy to be that we are finally here bringing the show out into the world. And what's that? Oh my goodness, episode two is out right now. Yes, why are you still here? You can go listen to that. You can go listen to episode two right now. It is in your feed. It is uploaded somewhere. Go listen to it and find out what happens next on Zaba, Driftwood, and Ernie's journey as they try to figure out a way to fix the mistake that was letting Tang Kai go. So yeah, if you like the show, we would really appreciate it if you could rate the show on Apple Podcasts, share it with a friend, or a tweet about the show. We could really use all that of that kind of support since we are a baby podcast just starting out right now. And yeah, thank you all so much for listening. And we will catch you next time. But seriously, we'll catch you next episode. Go listen to it right now. Thank you so much for listening to our little wayward show. We will catch you all later. Later.